Did you know? One of the earliest inspirations for Okami was Capcom's remake of Resident Evil. Released in 2002 and originally developed for the Nintendo GameCube, Resident Evil utilized the new console's graphical capabilities and stunned critics with its atmospheric visuals. As Hideki Kamiya, Okami's director, recalled, The Resident Evil team was the first team I worked with after I joined Capcom. When it was remade for the GameCube, I was very impressed by how far the visuals had come in their ability to depict realistic situations. I thought if we had enough institutional knowledge at Capcom to make a realistic horror game like Resident Evil, then I also wanted to try using this technology to make a world that was glistening and beautiful. That feeling was at the root of Okami. Kamiya explained that living and working in an urban environment had awakened a sense of hometown nostalgia in him, and he longed for the peaceful Japanese countryside. In order to satisfy his yearning for a rural setting, he made nature a focal point for his new project. Kamiya originally wanted Okami to have a realistic art style. In fact, completing the game unlocks a short clip that shows players the original artistic direction of the project. However, the concept had to be scrapped as the team couldn't achieve the level of detail they wanted to with the PlayStation 2's hardware limitations. According to Okami's producer, Atsushi Inaba, an art designer showed the development team a style inspired by sumie, or Japanese black ink paintings. The team loved the concept and decided to base the game's aesthetics on that. While developing the game in this new art style, Inaba wanted players to get involved with the artwork, rather than passively observing it. This led to the implementation of the Celestial Brush mechanic. As Amaterasu doesn't have a place to store an actual brush, the team decided to use her tail to draw instead. The developers wanted players to have fun with the Celestial Brush in the game's world, rather than run straight through the story. As a result, using the brush techniques on the game's environments can have some humorous effects. For example, power slashing the scroll in Susano's house will reveal a hidden picture of Kushi, and using whirlwind near characters and animals can cause them to get caught in the cyclone. The realistic art style wasn't the only thing that didn't make it into the final game. Early concept art showed Amaterasu transforming into a dolphin while swimming, and into a falcon while leaping from high edges. The eight canine warrior characters were originally planned to be human. Due to difficulties designing their human forms, Okami's lead character designer, Kenichiro Yoshimura, put the eight canine warriors aside to focus on other things. By the time Yoshimura returned to work on their designs, the scenario writers had already included the warriors in the game as actual dogs. Though shocked, Yoshimura went along with the idea. The character Isun, meanwhile, wasn't even planned to be in the game. According to Kamiya, the team knew Amaterasu needed a guide to compensate for her lack of dialogue. They eventually settled on someone tiny, no bigger than a flea, foul-mouthed and lecherous, which became the basis for Isun. Inspiration for many of the game's characters and plot points draw heavily from Shinto mythology and Japanese folklore. Isun is based on the Japanese folktale of Isun Boshi, in which an elderly couple wish for a child. Their wish is granted, but the child only grows to be one inch tall. The child then leaves his family to find his place in the world, and is given a needle for a sword, which resembles the weapon Isun uses in Okami. In the folktale, Isun defeats an Oni and acquire Ushide's mallet, a magic hammer which he uses to grow to normal size. This mallet appears in Okami as the lucky mallet item, however the mallet is used to shrink Amaterasu to Isun size rather than grow Isun. The characters Amaterasu and Suzuno are based on the Shinto deity siblings of the same names, and the first arc of the game closely follows the Shinto legend of Yamato no Orochi's demise. In the legend, Suzuno meets a grieving elderly couple who reveal that the eight-headed serpent, Yamato no Orochi, has been devouring one of their daughters every year for the past seven years. Their only remaining daughter is Kushinata Hime, but Orochi is coming for her as well. Suzuno promises to kill the beast, in return for Kushi's hand in marriage, and transforms her into a comb that he places in his hair. The game's Kushi's hair is distinctly comb-shaped. Suzuno and the couple then brew eight separate servings of sake for the eight heads of Orochi. When Orochi arrives, all eight heads intoxicate themselves, and the monster falls unconscious. As the game's boss fight against Orochi shows, Suzuno then chops the monster to bits, slaying it once and for all. 
Capcom localization producer David Chrislip explained that the game was firmly based in Japanese culture. This meant that Capcom could have gone in two very different directions with the western localization of the characters' names. They could have either completely westernized them, or they could have risked alienating the western audience by keeping the names 100% Japanese. The team instead tried to compensate by shortening some character names. For example, the sake brewer Kushinada was shortened to Kushi, and the Kamiki village boy Mushikai was shortened to Mushi. The localization process was sped up due to the game's lack of proper voice acting. As Chrislip explained in an interview with 1UP, it actually is real people talking and then scrambled. If they needed a certain emotion, they'd say, speak as if you were angry, and then they'd scramble it and play it backwards or something. Sighing and coughing is quite clearly someone really sighing or coughing. Then they just digitize it. Chrislip felt the mumbling aspect fit the fantasy setting of the game and left that as is. Capcom referenced several of their previous games with an Okami. When making your cherry cakes at night, Mrs. Orange will perform the raging demon attack used by Akuma in the Street Fighter series. When the player talks to Tom of the pyrotechnist in Shinshu Field, he will unveil his new firework, the Midnight Wonder Boy, alluding to Beautiful Joe's Midnight Thunder Boy. In the same Shinshu Field, the player can purchase a technique from Onigiri's Sensei's Dojo. Upon doing so, Onigiri will act out a transformation sequence similar to that of Joe's. Another, more direct reference can be found in the Fashion Girl's side quest in Seon City. After completing a few designs for her, the Fashion Girl will ask for a henshin design. Drawing a V on Mr. Cheek's kimono and fulfilling the Fashion Girl's request will trigger her to recite Joe's catchphrase, saying, Look doggy, isn't it beautiful? This is my latest design, the henshin pattern. Henshin a go-go, baby! Another one of Joe's quotes appears just before Amaterasu's second fight with Waka, when he says, just go for it. In Amaterasu's first fight with Waka, he'll say, let's rock baby instead. A reference to Dante from Devil May Cry. In 2007, a full year after Okami's initial PlayStation 2 release, the American development team Ready at Dawn began porting the game to the Wii. DDA Malanfan, Ready at Dawn's president at the time, claimed that the Wii version would be an exact port of the original game. The process proved to be rather difficult, however, as Capcom dissolved Okami's original development studio a mere two months after the initial PlayStation 2 release, and much of the work of the original game was missing as a result. Although many assets were provided by Capcom, portions of the game had to be re created from scratch by Ready at Dawn. Despite claims that no content would be cut during the port, the original Clover Studios credits were missing from the Wii version. Kamiya stated, I find it extremely regrettable that the Amoe that went into the staff role is gone from the game as well. Of course, these weren't just my Amoe. They were the Amoe of everyone who worked on the project, put together in a moment of bliss, held out just for those who completed the journey. It was a special staff role for a special moment, and now it's gone. All of it. It's incredibly disappointing and sad. Controversy also arose over the Wii port's North American box art. On the new cover, the watermark for the gaming publication IGN could be seen near Matarasu's mouth. This seemed to indicate that, rather than taking source material from their own archives, Capcom took the image from IGN's website while making the game's box art. To make up for their mistake, Capcom created an art redemption program. For a limited time, those who had a copy of the Wii version could fill out an application to be sent one of three high-resolution replacement covers for free. Development and shipment of the covers took so long that Capcom eventually mailed all three of the covers to everyone who had applied to compensate for the delay. The program has since been shut down. Capcom would later hire Japanese studio Hexadrive to remaster Okami on the PlayStation 3. The port was technically very impressive and even renders the game at a 4K resolution. The game is downsampled from 4K to 1080p in real time, resulting in a very smooth and clear image. Don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming for more facts and trivia. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you're a fan of Zelda, click the annotation on the screen to watch the Did You Know Gaming on Zelda glitches. And if you want to see me talking about cancelled games, game betas, bootlegs, or bad creepypastas, feel free to check out my channel at Yuri Buen.